Raymond, the cat that everyone knows. Even the people who don't play Animal Crossing are aware of this gray cat. He's like the Pikachu of the Animal Crossing world. He's everywhere all the time. Or at least, he was everywhere. For a solid two years, Raymond took over the world. Almost immediately, he became the face of New Horizons. But why? Who the heck is Raymond and why did anyone care about him? When you start out in New Horizons, the first few days are basically a tutorial. Nook teaches you where and how to collect resources, how to start populating your island, and telling you how cool KK Slider is. Part of this tutorial is introducing you to your villagers and teaching you how to villager hunt. Put a plot down, grab some Nook Mall tickets, go find a villager. The first three villagers you can hunt for will be one animal from each of the peppy, normal, and lazy personalities. While the two villagers you see on your island when you step off the plane for the first time will always be Jock and Sisterly. Eventually, Nook gives you a campsite to place somewhere on your island. Once you place your campsite, the game will fill it with a smug villager the very next day. And no matter who shows up here, they must be invited to your island before you're allowed to move on with the tutorial. This villager will always be someone from the smug personality. Look at all these animals. Not really ones that people would call cuties or dreamies. This list is full of, um, meanies. You've got Hippo, Chops, Quilson, Rodney, Hans, just villagers most wouldn't willfully allow on their island. Even I tried to not move in Hans when I first started. I walked in, didn't even talk to him, and immediately walked out. And the next day, he was uh, still there, so I made it a point to get him to move out shortly after. This was Raymond's debut. He was a diamond in the rough. The only brand new villager to New Horizons in the smug category. So naturally, when a select few found him in their campsite, they rightfully freaked out. A beautiful gray cat, two different colored eyes, and looks pretty good in a maid costume. Which I would love to say is not part of the reason why he's super popular today, but this person really escalated his popularity, like, quickly. Anyway, with the help of social media, those who were lucky enough to get Raymond as their first campsite villager bragged like crazy. Pictures were everywhere. This was in March of 2020. We were all in the middle of COVID lockdowns. No one could go anywhere except for the internet. It was the only way we could communicate with each other, and boy oh boy did we. People started freaking out that their friends had Raymond and they didn't. They were like me, just stuck with Hans, whoop de doo Not to mention the fact that the newly added New Horizons villagers didn't have amiibos associated with them. So the only way to get Raymond was through your campsite, from someone else who was kicking him off their island, which, let's be real, wasn't happening in the early days of Animal Crossing, and villager hunting. Which birthed the mechanic of villager hunting. Everyone started collecting Nook Mile tickets with the hopes that they would find Raymond in the five or so tickets that they could afford with their minimal number of Nook Miles since we were all still in the early stages of the game. This is another reason why Raymond became popular. If you don't know how villager hunting works, well, then you need to go watch more of my videos. Come on, what are you doing? Doing. But quickly, when you visit a mystery island, the game first rolls for a species. With 35 different species in the game, each type of animal has an equal chance of appearing. But after rolling for the species, the game then rolls for a specific villager in that species. And since cats are the most popular species, the math works out to mean that each specific cat is the rarest villager to find in this game. And since Raymond is a cat, that means he is one of the hardest villagers to find. Everyone wants him, no one can get him. Which means the scalpers were drooling all over him. eBay exploded with Raymonds. All of a sudden, everyone had him and was looking to sell a virtual cat for real money. And people were buying. Real money. Most of these Raymonds were hacked in, I'm assuming, because there was just so many of them. Which means that these scalpers were getting money for something that they did for free. Just pure profit. Whatever people are willing to pay for, I guess. The more legal sites started blowing up with Raymond listings too. Nookazon was crawling with Raymond posts. People traded hundreds or even thousands of Nook Mile tickets and millions of bells for the business cat. Even though this type of selling of Raymond isn't against TOS, it doesn't mean it wasn't overpriced. Not only were they selling an inbox's Raymond that you could come and pick up and bring to your island so you could have Raymond on your island, people were also selling the ability just to see Raymond. Not get him, just look at him. And then there was the listing that said they had Raymond in boxes, but it really just meant you could look at the outside of Raymond's house while he was in his house in boxes, but you couldn't talk to him. Which means he wouldn't come to your island. Ugh, Animal Crossing scams. That's how we knew we were all in the middle of something huge. 
This cat created an entire villager economy. There's a whole stock market system of villagers. Who's worth what? Their rise and fall. When each villager had the most popularity and could get you the most bang for your buck, both in bells and real currency. So what happened? Why does no one care about Raymond anymore? <clears throat> so there's this cat named Anka. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Kind of. I'd be lying if I didn't say Anka took a lot of the popularity for a bit. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Don't look it up. Trust me, you're so much better off not knowing. Besides Anka, Nintendo did a nice thing for us and released a 2.0 update a couple years after the game released. Along with a bunch of furniture and mechanics, we got a bunch of new villagers that didn't require amiibos to enjoy like the Sanrio babies that we got earlier. Some of the popularity shifted to new dreamies like Shino and Sasha. But the ghost of Business Cat is always hanging around. His legacy and memory will probably last forever. The community can only truly care about stuff for so long. Nowadays, memes go in and out of style so quickly. There's always something better around the corner. New trends, new songs, new villagers. Something to replace the thing that was previously popular. The Raymond hype lasted so much longer than I thought it was going to. Business Cat just wouldn't die. He'll always hold a special place in our hearts, whether you love him or hate him. Will another villager ever get to Raymond status? Probably not. Just like the popularity of New Horizons, everything kind of happened perfectly for Raymond to become a huge deal. COVID happened right when the game was coming out and everyone needed something to play. Switches were selling faster than hotcakes, which created a supply issue, which in turn created a huge influx of demand because no one could get their hands on a new Switch for months. We all had a bunch of FOMO from not hanging out with real people outside of our households, and thus recreated experiences on the internet and on our islands. It was the perfect Raymond storm, and we were all stuck in it. I'm kind of happy we all got to experience the Raymond era. It weirdly brought us all together for a little bit, no matter which side of the Raymond train you were on. The phenomenon was just something that kept our attention, gave us something to do when we were all starving for entertainment when Netflix got boring after like that first month of binge watching during lockdown. Now all we have to do is sit here and wait for the next Raymond that will take over our lives. And honestly, I'm kind of excited for it.